And that, folks, isn't that funny? We, that, folks, is why we chose Ben Bonham to work on a lot of the music for us. Oh, well, yeah. Ben, thank you. Thanks for doing yeah, this. Right now, um, <laughs> ben would, a, a, music is really important. If, if you are a historical fan of surfing movies, what they were all were were pounding guitars and and big drums the entire the entire film the entire yeah. film was, was music and it, it, i'd like to pay homage to that but also i also have to know that i've got a little story to tell here you know and and working I had done some session work with Ben in about 2015, I think it was 2016. And I really, we, we really clicked together. And I, we would get to a spot where I could call him and say, I need 45 seconds of what it sounds like to be a world champion. And he wouldn't see any footage. He wouldn't see anything. And in the morning, this fountain would open up and I would have eight different choices. And, <laughs> and and as 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 I know right now, he hasn't seen how his final work has been put together, but um, he has the main title in the film. Oh, uh, really? Oh, oh I didn't yeah, you have, the, you have the main title, the vibraphone. Oh, yeah. The, oh the, no, the, the vibraphone <laughs> section. The vibes, man. Talk the about vibes. The, talk about the vibes. The vibes. The vibes were gifted to my bass player. And I didn't know that he'd been gifted these vibes. And I saw them in his in his music room one day and I said, oh, I think I probably need to have those in my studio because I never played real vibes. And so I had, I had to do a bunch of fixing, like replacing felt and replacing rubbers for the, the wah-wah effect. But anyway, I yeah, I mean, you if you play, I mean, I, I play piano badly, but if you know anything, you can just be like, oh, it's the sound is so cool. Yeah. Was, and I was yeah. playing and playing steel guitar at the same time. It's like, oh, this is, yeah, they kind of really are. Yeah. You were playing steel guitar and the vibes at the same time? No, I would overdub. Okay. I would okay. overdub on it. No, I would do it at the same time. God, yeah. I'm, I'm I could barely play the vibes at all, you know. I mean, yeah. the, the, the complete one man band. Well, I, 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 and I did used to do a one man band, but it was all analog. It was all just, you know, what can I hit with my feet and my hands and blow in my mouth? It wasn't anything too fancy. You know? We have a, uh, <laughs> I, I, I live here in Monterey and, and we've kind of become this tourist destination. And I keep thinking that I could probably make a couple hundred bucks a day if I just you know, <laughs> took a guitar down to the to the path and and, and just let it happen. Well, just, well, just yeah, it's it's a numbers game, yeah. It's yeah, it really is. Game. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, you should do it, man. I spent I spent years busking. That's I, a good game. Yeah, it's a, it, 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 you know, really, I can I can just see practicing. You know, I mean, I can oh, exactly. go down there and and just and you know. Okay, I'm gonna make some noise for a while, and I'll get away from the computer, and I'll get away from everything else. And just first, like first time, to... first time I ever did really try to do music for money was busking. You know, I played, I played at the barbecue on the beach if I had enough punch, and by which time I couldn't play anyway or didn't know or whatever. But busking, I was, I was in Australia windsurfing um, in Perth, and then the Southwest, Margaret River, all the big wave stuff down there. But um, in Perth, I went busking, but it took me three days of going into the shopping center, walking around, eyeing up the perfect spot to play, and then just going back home again because I was too terrified. You know, the thought of playing and singing. And, and finally, the third day, I'm like, I got to, I have to do it. And so I found a place where I wasn't too near anyone's shop doorway. And there was a little fountain opposite where people could sit. And, and I started playing, and I play, I was playing my version of Taj Mahal's version of Henry Thomas's fishing blues, you know, everyone knows the Taj version, but I know the old quill version as well. So I can have a mixed up version of the two. So I start playing and I'm literally 20 seconds into it. And a horde of 10 year old school children came right in front of me and stood and pointed and laughed, <laughs> pointing and laughing. You know, like the word, the thing you're most scared of happened and they moved on. And I didn't die. <laughs> and then someone put some money in the case. And then and I was like, oh. And I thought to myself, that's 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 probably the worst it will ever be. I think that's the worst it's ever been, actually. I, I've never, I've never it, it, it's such a it's such a funny visual. You know, it, it's just such a funny visual of, of that hat. Yeah. 
you, well, you, yeah, terrifying. You grew up in England. I grew up in England, yeah. But I, yeah. I started, you know, I started windsurfing when I was four. I surfed when I was like a young kid down in Cornwall and Devon. There's some good mm. surf on the south, southwest of England. And, you know, as soon as windsurfing came out, I saw that and I was a big time skateboarder. I skateboarded from the age of 10. Like, you know, we used to, you know, empty the pool with water when they thought, you know, the whole thing we saw on the Californian films. And man, we were into it. And then I saw this windsurfing and I made a sale to go on my skateboard. That was the first thing I did. And then I, I started windsurfing and I started teaching, teaching windsurfing when I was 18, as soon as I could qualify. And I spent the first year teaching in the UK, you know, in a ice cold lake in Wales, you know, horrible. And then I saw an advert in a magazine, you know, teach windsurfing in the sun. And I was like, ah, oh. so I was off to Greece and that was it. I did it for years, you know? Wow. So yeah. Wow. And I left, I, I kind of left the UK probably when I was around 20, 21. That was it. That was it for England for me. Your, your, um, your knowledge of the blues and the roots music, I, I think is, is, is part of your upbringing. I, that just to, to have yeah. that, have that investigative idea you know like it's a, it's it's a thing yeah it's a it's a much bigger thing in the uk it's it's different now when i first i moved here in 96 and i used to play on the street and i'm playing old country blues sunny terry and brownie mcgee that's where mm -hmm. that's where i started and then i went back and fought you know all around and into the hawaiian and into the early everything but um in the uk muddy waters is a household name always has been since the stones said hey guys this is what we, this is who we are copying. You know, you think we're great, but this guy is the great guy. And in America, it's like, he's a black man and he's not part of the, you know, accepted society. And it's, it's so in the UK, like my dad knew about all the old blues guys, you know, they're, they're known. And here I'd play on the streets and people would be like, oh, is that bluegrass? And it's like, no, it's not bluegrass. It's, it's American blues, you people. <laughs> oh, you know, blue, like, oh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's like, no, it's not Stevie Ray Vaughan. No, please, no, please. Yeah, there is, there is a, um, a deeper, more common understanding of, of country blues in the UK. It, I, um, a lot I, of it comes from the, skiff, from the skiffle movement and then through, you know, through the, the Beatles and the Stones. Them and they, that's, what they were, that's what they were digging after, you know? It, 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 it's... it's really beautiful to me that we gave you that we as a country oh yeah we I gave, take you, it. gave I... you that and 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 you guys ran with it you know uh, we yeah. we we you know muddy couldn't eat lunch in a diner no i know no and, and he was and he was treated as royalty in the uk absolutely, absolutely you know yeah. so it, it, it I guess I guess well, the grass, you say the, a little bit more developed. The yeah. grass is always the grass is always greener. Like I I like I, I like being here because it's different. And I I have friends here, you know, people who grew up in this country, and they like a lot of English music that I really don't like at all. And there's there is a sense of like what you don't have and what you don't grow up with is the thing I think that I've I mean I've I've always been attracted to the not usual, you know, if it's popular. I'm probably not going to like it. People have said to me countless times in 25 years of trying to be a, a you know a professional musician, you know, if you played music people like, you'd probably do quite well. <laughs> you know, but no, no. Part of the point is no one, not many people like that shit. You know, <laughs> I have to tell you that we had we had a little transmission issue right when and your voice slowed really down to the uh -oh. you, no to the perfect spot like <laughs> like that was this it was a special effect and then it <laughs> came right back and it was it was really really kind of fun thanks that's good um, yeah yeah I, I like those 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 uh those moments. Well, I, I have the, i have this this is this was the key to the special effect you know so yeah, yeah okay i i I'd, I'd, I'd say the same thing um <laughs> you 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 gave us slide steel guitar you gave us electric steel guitar you gave us the vibes um it really is astounding when i play it for people and we just did get to screen this at, at the chinese in hollywood and you sounded fantastic you know i mean it, it was it was unbelievable to hear it that's, it's that's such a 
that's such a trip though, Richard. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't believe you for a second. You know, I you're, you're obviously, I I you're obviously even, lying. <laughs> I can't, I can't even, I can't even think about what it was like because for three years I've sat here and mixed it on these, you know, small. No, you, you, yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden it's in, it's, it's as big as you are. And your fear as a filmmaker is, oh, it's going to look like crap when it, yeah. you know, yeah. it's going to fall apart and it's going to, yeah. it, and it looks really good and it sounded better than the other six things. And it was a breath of fresh air. And I, I, again, you know, um, if that's it, great. It, 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 what a, what a, what a, what a great view to be able to look back into this room and see this. And, and besides being a musician and a cat lover, a cat, um, cat, cat. Well, she owns me, but whatever. Yeah. Cat, cat tender. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben builds instruments. Mm -hmm. That's it now. Yeah. Talk a little the, bit the, about that. COVID, COVID did something there. Huh? No, no, it was it was pre-COVID. I had a um, brother-in-law came out for two weeks windsurfing. You know, the summer here in the gorge, we have the, the, the Columbia River, and it's one of the best places to sail every day I've ever lived in my life. And he came out for a couple of weeks and... The first night I had gigs every night while he was here because it's the summer, you know, probably two on Saturday. And the first night I was like, hey, I'm playing with this great band at, you know, six o'clock. You want to come? We've been sailing in the afternoon and we're sitting on the sofa and my wife's making dinner and got a can of beer. And he's like, no, I don't want to go. And in that second, I thought, I don't want to go either. <laughs> and I just suddenly didn't. I, and, and I can't, I canceled something like 45 gigs in the space of a week. It's much quicker to cancel gigs than book them, turns out. And yeah, and, and I'd started building instruments and I just, I just suddenly didn't, my creative juices have suddenly just went in another direction. And now I'm really into, into the rebuilding and the building of, of new instruments. And each thing I build is completely different and I want it to look and sound and feel unlike anything else. And so I still, I'm, I'm now kind of just booking some gigs again because, you know, two years of COVID does that to you because I couldn't play. Then I wanted to play because I couldn't, but... I've, I've got gigs again a bit now so you know but um, but really i'm focused in the shop now yeah on your on your website there's this amazing dobro and i can see it right behind you why don't you bring which, that out why don't you bring which one the, the one the blue one. Oh, this one. Oh, that one yeah yeah this one is um yeah this this is a, a nylon string nylon string single cone resophonic is there another it, nylon string resophonic guitar so in in the I believe the fifties and sixties, a company called Del Vecchio made some, but they had Dobro cones, not national single cones. And Chet Atkins had one, and I think he gave it to someone like Brent Mason or someone like that. So a lot of the Nashville recording guys have them, and you know they're they're doing you know working on ten sessions a day, and every eight years they're like, oh, I know what would sound good on this track, and they go grab their nylon string Dobro. So they they got a very specific niche this doesn't sound like a del vecchio because it's a single cone let's let, let's clarify that there's from my understanding there's two types of dobro resonators one's a spider and mm -hmm. one is a, is, a, is a biscuit and yes exactly the, and the national cone is a biscuit cone yes yes so it's, it's a it's a situation where this pie pan has to fit exactly completely level around that entire circle while um and there's my dog and your dog while, yeah yeah and while um everything's pressing down on it and yeah it's a it's a tricky procedure to do but uh boy sound is like none other yeah and if you're gonna if you're gonna play on the street and busk it's you know you you'll be able to be heard over the buses going by so yeah so yeah i i, I really and I'm a, I'm a national fan i have um four vintage nationals. Um, I got to know the owner before he died of the company. It was Rebirth and I, I love them to death and I'm trying to make wood versions of national instruments really. So I, and I, I build their trichome version as well. And I've built a few um, Dobros with, with spiders. I, I like that. I mean, it's a different sound, but Completely. personally, personally, this is my, my preferred, yeah. My preferred sound. It's just, you know, wow. you won't be, I don't know if you can hear on this. Yeah, our little zoom our zoom probably doesn't really yeah <laughs> doesn't work um, for the old music and you make some pretty nifty parlor guitars oh yeah i'll we'll grab you that's the kind of recent recent thing so 
always loved, loved small guitars and as I, I play more and more sitting around at home. So this is one of my recent parlor guitars. This is a Sycamore back and sides and some very, very old ancient redwood from a friend in California. Not yourself, who I've also got redwood from, from California, but, um, and it's the same scale as a Gibson Les Paul. Wow. So it's a 24 and a half and it's a, it's a nice, real comfortable little scale. But I'm also rebuilding a lot of old guitars. All of the, the very cool catalog guitars they made in the in the, fifth, the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So, you know, Montgomery Ward and Sears and Roebuck. And if you look, this little logo, that is, uh, as well as being an at atomic looking 60s thing, that is the Sears and Roebuck guitar logo, S SR, you can see there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this thing... Yeah. This thing was made of, of solid birch. It was all solid woods, but it was ladder braced and it was, you know, just kind of thrown together. So I took the top off, nice piece of spruce, rebraced it with a good cross bracing kind of profile, radius the fingerboard, reshaped the neck. And it's louder than most dreadnoughts that you, you hear. And it doesn't have the oomphing boom of a dreadnought, but um, I, I love taking an old guitar, which otherwise would go to the burn pile, you know? And so I, I sell a lot of these in a shop in Portland, in Oregon. And he, he used to sell a lot of, you know, offshore guitars that were 500 bucks and, you know, whatever. And now he tries to sell more of my rebuilds, which can be five to a thousand, depending on what they are. But they're cool, cool guitars and they'll last another 60, 80 years. Like this one as well. Imagine you like this one. This is a, this is a silver ton with a very cool logo on the headstock. And the neck was was horrible. It was a piece of poplar. It didn't really work very well. It was didn't have a truss rod. So I built a new neck and put it on this instrument. The body is a solid top, you know, and it's a pressed arch top. It's not carved, but it's all solid spruce. But I sliced I sliced the headstock off like a veneer and then glued it onto the new neck because that was the only cool bit. And then I, I matched the. I did some sort of inlays to match. Um, I have I got given a bunch of ivory from an old piano someone decommissioned. Oh, wow. So oh, I get to wow. use ivory inlays. So. so this is this is a great. It's the poor man's L7, you know. Yeah, it, and it's the, the 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 worst part about Zoom is uh, sometimes the audio is just not the great. Oh, but I, I know, I know. We, it's when, we yeah. um, we encourage people to check Ben's website. Yeah, Bonham Bonham Design. You can check stuff out there. And uh, probably hear some things a little bit different. And we can't wait for you to hear him in the film. And uh... I can't wait to see this film, Richard. I've talked to you about this film. <laughs> I've thought about this film. I've seen maybe two clips from this film in the last however many years it's been. Yeah, 31 um, years or however long it's taken to make. But Yeah, 150 it, years. L longer than my guitars are old, I know. You'll, you'll get an invitation for, sh for sure. I, yeah, I can't wait. Thank you so much for your, your time this afternoon, Ben. Of and, course, and, anytime. And, and, and the gift that you gave us with music. Oh, no, man, thank you for asking me. I mean, it's it's always, flat. as a musician, nothing is more flattering than being asked to do some music for someone else's project, whatever it is, you know. And for a film, it's, you know, a gig comes and goes, but a recording or a film, I mean, it's huge. It's, it's extremely flattering. I'm, you know, absolute pleasure to do it. I'm only horrified it's not as good as i wish it was and, and you know and it never will be but that's yeah, I, I you know think, i think it's i think it's pretty good so it's, go it sounds the, like me so that's what you get you know <laughs> go get out there and get on that board and uh thank you very much for your time this afternoon yeah man good okay. to talk to you see, see you well. soon yeah all right yeah. see ya